Jonathan Edwards's theological exploration illuminates the profound alignment between God's creation of the world and his supreme self-regard, positing that the universe's creation is a direct manifestation of God's intrinsic delight and value in his own attributes. According to Edwards, the rational perspective that God prioritizes himself above all is seamlessly integrated with the concept that his creation reflects an ingrained appreciation for his own inherent qualities. This view challenges a superficial understanding of creation as merely an external act, instead revealing it as a deeply interconnected expression of God's own essence. At the heart of Edward's discourse is the idea that God's infinite love for himself naturally extends to a love for the expressions of his attributes within the creation. He argues that God's valuing of his own perfections logically leads him to cherish the operations and effects that these perfections produce in the world. For Edwards, the excellence of God's attributes, such as wisdom and justice, is fully realized not in their bare existence, but in their active expression and implementation. This perspective is analogous to valuing a friend's virtues not in the abstract, but in their tangible effects and applications. Edwards supposes that God's engagement with the world, including the act of creation, is essentially an extension of his self-love, by delighting in and valuing the expressions of his own perfections, God's actions in the world are seen not as divergent from his ultimate end, which is himself, but as integral manifestations of his infinite goodness and fullness. Edwards's claim intricately links the concept of divine self-love with the act of creation, suggesting that the universe's very existence and continuing dynamism are great thoughts of God's perfect nature and ultimate delight in his own glory. Also, Edwards complicatedly investigates the concept of love from a divine perspective, presenting a compelling case about God's self-love and its manifestation through creation and the recognition of his own perfections. He postulates that love inherently involves a desire for the appreciation and valuing of one's virtues and excellences by others. This principle, he emphasizes, applies universally including in the divine context where God's self-regard prompts a natural inclination for his excellencies to be acknowledged and esteemed. Central to Edwards's dialogue is the assertion that if it is appropriate for a being to love and value its own inherent qualities, it is similarly appropriate for this being to find joy in the recognition and appreciation of these qualities by others. This joy and acceptance is not slightly an adjunct to self-love, but an integral part of it. Edwards extends this logic to the divine, suggesting that God's self-love motivates him to make himself the ultimate end of his actions. Moreover, Edwards delves into the nature of God's benevolence, debating that God's desire to emanate his glory and fullness to creation is not primarily for the creature's sake, but to express and realize his own glory. This disposition precedes the existence of creatures, and is thus not directed towards them as ends in themselves, but as vessels through which his glory is manifested. Edwards's insights show that God's benevolence, while beneficial to creation, is ultimately an expression of his self-love. This divine self-regard is framed not as selfishness, but as the fitting orientation of a supremely perfect being whose ultimate purpose is the self-manifestation of his glory. Through this nuanced examination, Edwards offers a serious perspective on divine love, self-love, and the intention of creation, accentuating the elaborate relationship between God's benevolence and his desire to express and be recognized for his own infinite excellencies. Furthermore, Edwards baroquely surveys the nature of God's love, presenting a sophisticated dichotomy between general benevolence and a more exacting form of love that agrees with the future or conceptual existence of its objects. He presupposes that God's love, in its strictest form, is not hardly an antecedent to creation, but rather is contingent upon the divine intention to create, thus rendering the act of creation as an expression of God's pre-existing arrangement to impart goodness. Diving deeper, Edwards conceptualizes God's heart as inherently inclined towards manifesting and proliferating his glory, drawing parallels with natural phenomena like a tree's growth or the sun's radiance, which inherently strive towards their fullest expression. This diffusion of divine aspect is portrayed not as an external act, but as a basic fulfillment of God's nature, achieving a state of divine completeness. 
The church emerges as a pivotal element in this cosmic scheme, serving as both the vessel and manifestation of God's glory, akin to the vital complementarity between Adam and Eve. Through this theological lens, Edwards articulates a vision where God's dissemination of his glory, while ostensibly a benevolent outreach towards creation, is fundamentally an act of divine self-realization. This perspective harmonizes the seemingly differing motives of divine action for God's own sake and for the sake of creation, suggesting a thorough unity between the Creator and the created order. The Church, as the locus of God's glory, epitomizes the consummation of divine expression, symbolizing the integral role of creation in accomplishing the narrative of divine love and glory. Edwards's theology, thus, affords a subtle comprehension of divine love, positing the creation and sustenance of the universe as an acutely interconnected expression of God's inherent nature and meaning. In addition, Edwards enunciates a weighty grasp of God's motivations and delights in creation, focusing particularly on the dissemination of divine knowledge. He supposes that God, in His infinite wisdom and goodness, creates not out of necessity, but from a desire to express and revel in His own fullness and glory, the impartation of divine knowledge to creation, especially the knowledge of God Himself, exists as a central theme in this divine act of self-expression and communion. According to Edwards, this transmission of knowledge aids more than an educational aim. It is a means through which the creature can partake in the divine nature, mirroring God's infinite knowledge on a much smaller scale. This process is akin to sunlight spreading its rays, each beam of light, though distinct and less intense than the sun itself, shares in and emanates the sun's inherent brilliance. Similarly, the knowledge of God bestowed upon his creatures, while infinitely lesser in degree, shares in and cogitates the divine intuitiveness. This act of sharing knowledge is thus a form of self-revelation, where God manifests his nature to creation, inviting it into a more profound relationship with him. Further, Edwards affirms that the glorification of God is inherently tied to this divine knowledge. In knowing God, the creature not only achieves its highest ambition, but also contributes to the glorification of God. This knowledge enables the creature to recognize and celebrate God's supreme excellence, thereby glorifying him through a recognition of his inherent worth and majesty. Edwards concludes that God's delight in sharing his knowledge and glory with his creation stems from his supreme value for himself and his attributes. This divine act of creation and knowledge sharing is not a display of egotism, but a profound expression of God's desire for communion and self-manifestation. Through creation, God seeks to express His fullness, invite recognition of His majesty, and share the joy of His divine quality, making Himself the ultimate end of all His works. Besides, Edwards digs into the serious nature of God's communication with his creation, asserting the transmission of divine attributes, holiness and happiness as core emanations of God's fullness. Edwards postulates that this divine outpouring allows creatures to partake in God's own moral excellence, which he identifies as the true beauty of divine nature. This notion is grounded in the belief that God, by nature, delights in his beauty and, by extension, finds pleasure in the holiness of his creation, which reflects and aids in his own sanctity. This creaturely holiness is rooted in love, especially a love that venerates God through admiration of his perfections and joyful praise of his majesty, considering an implanted glorification of God that he inherently approves. Additionally, Edwards discusses the concept of divine happiness as another facet of God's fullness shared with creation. He outlines that divine joy stems from God's self-rejoicing and that creatures in their happiness partake in this divine contentment by rejoicing in God. This shared joy helps not only as a form of praise, but also magnifies and exalts God, reinforcing the idea that the creature's ultimate happiness is found in God, the source and object of true joy. Edward's dissertation highlights the integral relationship between God and his creation, marked by a shared participation in divine qualities. This divine human interaction, according to Edwards, aims to conform creatures to God's image, uniting them with him and thereby enhancing God's glory. Through this lens, Edwards expresses a vision of creation intensely intertwined with the divine, 
where the communication of God's fullness is not just a gift, but a transformative process that elevates both creature and creator, illustrating the thorough interconnectedness of divine holiness, love, happiness, and glory. Last but not least, Edwards presents an irresistible vision of the divine aspiration behind creation, centering on the eternal communication between God and His creation. Edwards presupposes that God's ultimate aim was not only the act of creation itself, but the unfolding, perpetual disclosure of His essence, knowledge, love, and joy to the creatures He fashioned. This divine account is demonstrated by an increasing intimacy and communion between the Creator and the created, a process through which the latter grow in their knowledge, love, and joy in God. Central to Edwards's thesis is the idea that as creatures receive more of God's communicative heart, they become increasingly united with Him. This unity is characterized by a developing love that draws the creature closer to God, fostering a more robust and intimate bond. It's a life-changing journey towards perfecting the creature's conformity to God's image, depicting the weighty unity between the Father and the Son, a theme Edward sees as the answer of Christ's prayer for oneness among his followers, as depicted in John 17, 21, 23. This evolving union, according to Edwards, signifies that the elect, those intended to fully partake in this divine communion, are, in their eternal aspect, woven into the very fabric of God's being. Their interests and gods converge, contemplating a sacred kinship that transcends even the most intimate earthly relations. Edwards employs the analogy of a family to demonstrate this concept, where the interests of family members are intimately aligned with one another due to their relational bonds. However, the bond between God and His elect is described as infinitely richer and more profound. Edwards's theological analysis uncovers a universe elementally designed to return to its creator, where all creation is drawn inexorably towards an eternal communion with God. This vision represents creation as a potent ongoing process of divine involvement aimed at promoting a stronger, more perfect union with the divine. Through this eternal sojourn, Edwards utters a theology of direction and destiny, where the ultimate end of all creation is to deliberate and partake in the divine nature, achieving a sublime oneness with God. In conclusion, Edwards's theological examination displays a vivid perception of the relationship between God's creation of the universe and His supreme self-love. Central to Edwards's contention is the notion that the creation of the world is not an arbitrary act, but a manifestation of God's fixed delight in His own attributes, aligning the act of creation closely with God's self-regard. This perspective confronts conventional interpretations of creation as a minor external act, proposing instead that it is a passionately interconnected expression of God's nature. Moreover, Edwards pronounces that God's love for himself extends naturally to a love for his creation as it meditates his attributes. He posits that God values his own perfections, leading him to cherish the expressions of these perfections in the world. This idea suggests that the excellence of God's attributes, such as wisdom and justice, is fully realized not in their existence alone, but in their active expression and implementation in the world. Furthermore, Edwards examines the nature of divine love, indicating that God's self-love motivates him to create as a way to express and revel in his glory. This act of creation, according to Edwards, is also an act of self-revelation, inviting creation into a greater relationship with God. He probes how the impartation of divine knowledge allows creatures to partake in the divine quality, musing God's infinite knowledge and glorifying Him through recognition of His supremacy. Lastly, Edwards's intuitions disclose a universe created to ponder and partake in the divine nature, suggesting a serious unity between the Creator and creation. His work maintains the gravity of divine self-love and the expression of God's attributes through creation, extending a delicate perspective on the function of creation as a profoundly interconnected expression of God's inherent nature and ultimate delight in His own glory.